today we're going to look at my approach to rhythm patches. We're going to be using my Kiesel A7 with the Lundgren M7 pickup in the bridge, going into my Axpex 2 and then straight into Ableton. And my approach is fairly standard in some ways and a bit non-standard in others. But I'm not going for a traditional rhythm guitar tone, I'm going for something that sounds really sharp, aggressive. In some ways I want it to sound like pure electricity. So I'm going to try and recreate something close to my main rhythm patch which I've been using for a while now. And it seems to work well across all of my high gain extended range guitars. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to do on the Axe FX is create a link from the input to the output. So now, hopefully, okay, so we'll start with the amp and cab. So let's load those up. Don't know what that is. Gonna go for one of the fractal audio models. Keep it simple or go with fast modern. The cool thing about the Axe FX is a lot of this stuff sounds good, you know, right out of the box. Cab wise, I really like their V30 cab. This one here. I don't know what it is about this cab, but I always find myself using this one. I do like to do is bring the high cut down to about about 10,000 just to take off the unnecessary high end frequencies that aren't present in a real cab. Now currently the input drive is around well nearly six. We're not going to need it that high later on because we're going to boost it. <laughs> So I'm going to bring that down and then find the spot where it's just starting to break up. So you see with this fast modern model uh, paired with that V30 cab, even with the input drive down at around you know 2.7, that's still quite an aggressive sound. Now I'm just going to boost the mids and the treble slightly. I also boosted the master volume. It's louder, but not necessarily better, so for the purpose of this demonstration, let's just bring it down. The next thing I want to do is to emulate the way a 14 grind works. It's my favourite boost pedal. If you don't know what a 14 grind is, there's a lot of debate about them online. They're very expensive and what they do is very, very simple, but it does sound great. I mean, I believe in the Axe FX3 there is a built-in boost model on the 14 grind, but this is a, a very basic way to do it. Now, normally what you'd see with a lot of high gain rhythm tones is to put a drive here. So maybe something like a Tube Screamer with the drive all the way down but the volume all the way up and then that boosts the front end of the amp. But we're not going to use a drive, we're going to use a filter block. Now the grind is basically a clean boost with a tilt EQ built in. So it's basically going to 
reduce the lows and boost the um, upper mids in a really smooth way, like a tilt EQ, and we can do that on the Axfex quite easily by selecting a tilt EQ. Yeah, we're going to bring the high cut down to about 10,000 because we don't want to introduce very high frequencies that don't need to be there because anything that we put in front of the amp is obviously going to be amplified. Now the way a tilt EQ works is that you have a centre frequency and when you boost that frequency, you know that's where the centre of the tilt will be. So what we want to do is to, which I think quite a few people now that have analysed what the grind does, have found it to be around 300 hertz. I'm going to boost that all the way. That maybe not all the way. Let's try 10 dB. Now, as I said, the grind is a clean boost, so it takes that tilt EQ and it adds loads of clean gain. So we're going to do the same thing by boosting the level. I'm going to go as high as 10 dB. Maybe not 10, I'll do 8. And I'm going to bypass that for a second so you can hear what that does to the tone. <laughs> Quite aggressive, but a bit muddy. So you can hear what difference that makes that pushes all these frequencies into the front of the amp, which are then amplified, and also cuts some of these lows. So what you end up with is a tight, more aggressive sound. One more time, without the grind emulator. And with. So to me, that's just got a little bit more bite to it. But one of the problems you encounter is some of the frequencies here, now they're amplified, they're really harsh. So we're going to put an EQ in here. Oh, my EQ's gone over here. And all I'm going to do is at 3000 hertz, which is where I tend to find some of that scratchy sound lives, I'm just going to dip that by about 3 dB. I'm just going to tighten the queue up a little bit to about noon. So now, if you envision we've got this curve going into the amp, but here, say, well, maybe here, around 3000, there's a slight problem. This is just pulling some of those frequencies out, maybe reducing them back down to a normal level before it gets amplified. So what we now have is a bit more control over that tone. Now between the amp and the cab, that's where I like to put my gate. At the risk of sounding like a 14 fanboy, I do use a Zool pedal, and again you can emulate the way that works. Now the difference between uh, a normal gate and the Zool, the Zool has a key input which is separate to the signal path, so you can take a split from your guitar, usually people use a tuner, I use a buffer splitter. So basically the, the gate is reacting to my DI, but cutting the signal where it is in the chain, so I place it in the effects loop of the amp, Although that might sound quite confusing, it's really not. It basically means that it's listening to the guitar, but cutting the amp. So I'm going to set the threshold. I know this guitar tends to like about minus 50. Okay, so the important thing to do here is to make the side chain select input one. That basically means that this is going to act like I said the Zool does. It's going to listen to the input, which is the first stage after the guitar, but it's going to cut here between the amp and the cab. And that is how we have a really tight gate sound that reacts to exactly what I'm playing. The 
you're playing modern metal, you're probably using a lot of palm mutes, and when you palm mute, you're basically changing the timbre of the guitar sound, and you're adding a lot of low ends, which can be really uncontrollable when you're tuning quite low. So what I like to do is to add a multi-band compressor after the cap, uh, put the level down to zero on all of them, because I don't want to boost any of these. I'm basically going to turn band two and three off. I don't want anything to happen above 120 hertz. And all this is going to do now, I'm going to raise the threshold slightly until this just starts to take some of the edge off the low end palm mutes. <laughs> Quite subtle, but it does make a difference. Especially when you're double tracking and then you have these these low chugs building up. The last thing I do is add a couple more EQs, one here and one here. And what I would normally do is go into my door um, and use you know, a really precise EQ, like a Fab Filter Pro Q, to find all those uh, whistles that you normally find in guitar tones. I'm not going to go into great detail, but essentially you find where those little whistles are and you pull them out with really tight Q. So I'll do that very quickly now. I'm not going to show it because it makes a very boring video. Okay, so I've got my two EQs now. And I've basically used very high cues, not cutting a lot, maximum 3 dB. And these are just little peaks that I found using Pro Q2. I mean, you could, you could use this, it's just easy to use an actual EQ. And I basically pulled these frequencies down where they're making like a little whistle. Obviously, these are really overemphasized by the fact I'm using the filter in the way that I am. So I've kind of created a problem here which I need to fix later in the chain, but it's give and take and it's given me that aggressive trebly sound that I want and here I'm starting to deal with a couple of the issues that that's caused. So at the end of the signal there's just a couple more that I want to get rid of. There's one around 750Hz which was bugging me and just a couple of ones higher up, again caused by the use of the filter in this way. Obviously it's worth bearing in mind that everything you do before the amp is going to cause a knock on effect afterwards because whatever you do here is amplified. One thing I like to do at the end of the signal chain is just remove the useless information below 40 hertz using a blocking EQ here. It's not audible but the information is there, so you may as well cut it out before it causes an issue in your processing later. That gives us something that sounds a little bit like this. interesting to you let me know what you think of the tone i'll try and make some in context examples soon but that's my basic approach to rhythm patches okay i've thrown something together quite quickly just to demonstrate this in context there's no real mix going on to speak of just a couple of things to demonstrate so the drums are just they're just ggd invasion on a default setting guitars of what i've just demonstrated with just a low and high cut tie them up just a little bit. The bass has just got a low cut and a compressor and there's just a bit of automation to turn on extra reverb for the cleans. 
and the master bus have Sonoworks monitoring and there's just a compressor and a limiter.